For more, I'm joined here in the studio by Paris-based lawyer John Whitbeck, who is a former advisor to the Palestinian negotiating team. Thank you very much indeed for coming to talk to us. Um, just looking at events the last couple of days, but more, you know, just going back even throughout the course of the summer, the prospect of sitting down for peace talks looks more distant than perhaps at any other point in recent memory. I don't think anybody really takes that seriously as something that's useful to do now. I think in the best of all possible worlds, there would be talks further down the road, but only after the rules of the game have changed and the playing field has been leveled by international action in support of fundamental human rights, justice, and international law of the sort we haven't seen yet, but just might out of sheer frustration with the behavior of the current Israeli government. You mentioned the behavior of the government there, the announcement of settlements just the day after uh, yesterday's uh, horrific incidents. Um, and, and some might say that some of the steps taken by the Israeli government have done more to aggravate than perhaps uh, diffuse the situation. Well, I think that is, is typical, it's not only of, of, of Israel, but often the instinctive reaction is to hit back hard and thereby aggravate rather than assuage the legitimate grievances that are producing um, violent reactions of frustration, rage, and hopelessness, and make it worse. And indeed, it's possible that uh, in the eyes of at least certain people in the, Europe, the Israeli government, that's not a bad thing, because they're used to coping with violence. You know, they're have overwhelming physical power to cope with violence. As they've demonstrated many times, it's coping with what they call lawfare and Palestinian recourse to international law, international institutions, international support that really frightens them. So I think there may be some who would hope for a third Palestinian intifada to give them you know, breathing room to maintain the status quo for a few more years. Um, just in the last couple of days and also in the last few weeks, we've seen these votes taking place, symbolic rather than binding votes in parliaments, including the French uh, National Assembly, uh, with regard to the recognition of a Palestinian state. Is that having any uh, effect or is that likely to be of any, uh, is that likely to change anything as far as you're aware? Well, it could. It remains to be seen. I mean, <coughs> what, what we have seen is that very few of the parliamentarians who voted so far want to be on record against a Palestinian state. I mean, the vote in the British House of Commons was 274 to 12, and the Irish Senate unanimous last night in the Spanish lower house of parliament, 319 to 2. But what really matters is not symbolic confirmations of enthusiasm in principle for a two-state solution at some vague time in the future. What would matter and could change things is many more European countries doing what Sweden did this month and actually extending full diplomatic recognition to the state of Palestine, even while it remains under occupation. And, and that's where I think the hope lies. And in addition to that, and as a logical consequence, the European states should then announce a program of economic sanctions, which would be ratcheted up until such time as Israel complies with international law and relevant UN resolutions and withdraws from the occupied state of Palestine. I'm not saying that's likely, but I'm saying I think it's the only thing that could have hope for the future and also have a, restore some immediate hope for the Palestinians who are um, to just blowing up, frankly, with frustration, rage, hopelessness in the sorts of things that happened yesterday morning. And I don't think it's surprising they're happening. I think given the situation, it's surprising that they're happening as infrequently as they have until now. Uh, and just finally, you were, of course, a, uh, an advisor to the Palestinian negotiating team. If you were still advising them, what advice would you be giving them right now? I would advise them that right now is a unique moment which is more favorable to the Palestinians than anything I have seen in my lifetime. 
in that you have European extreme frustration after the latest onslaught on Gaza. You even have an American president in the final two years in office who has no further elections to fear, uh, who has an embarrassing Nobel Peace Prize to justify, and who visibly detests Bibi Netanyahu. So I think this is the moment to go all out for international recognitions, both bilateral in Europe and going back to the UN Security Council to try again to be admitted as a full member state rather than an observer state. Because even if it's not likely, I don't think it's inconceivable that Barack Obama now, never before, but now could instruct his UN ambassador not to veto. And if Palestine's a UN member state, the occupation of a UN member state by a neighboring state cannot be permitted to continue indefinitely. Thank you so much. We're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much, uh, John Whitbeck, a former advisor to the Palestinian negotiating team. Thank you so much for speaking to France 24.